Hey, listen, sister. See, that's one of the problems right there. You see that guy right there with the small hat? Right? That's one of the biggest problems. That is the biggest problem in the world. Right? He's saying he's a Jew and he is not. He's an Amalekite that the Lord wanted to be destroyed since the days of Saul. Look at Look, he wants you to shake his hand. He wants you to shake his hand. Why won't we shake his hand? Daniel 8 and 23. I'll tell you why he won't shake his hand. Because we believe in this truth. We believe in the Bible. nationality yes your father what Angola uh, I mean <laughs> the jury is out yeah you know but, no you know you come in don't don't be a coward and try to get some camera time and then run off man get all the camera time right get all the bowing down to the prophets man so what he just said was, what he just, what he just read to you was the destruction of America, right? And America wants, listen, the Lord wants America to be as drunk as possible, okay? Because America has made his people drunk. Give me that in Habakkuk 2 and 15. America has made his people drunk. So the Lord said, you know what? Go ahead and get drunk, Americans. And I don't gotta be literal wine, right? It doesn't have to be literal wine, but it's a spiritual drunkenness that all of these people around you are in. It's called a delusion. You ever got drunk, right? And you see two people are double-minded. They don't even, there was a guy up here earlier said, I'm sinking, I don't know what to believe. You know why? Because truth is not in the earth. Only truth could come through the Bible and via the prophets that God seals to teach the truth. No one knows the truth, but the truth hurts, sister. The truth in the matter is America is not going to be here forever like they teaching you. Go ahead. St. John chapter 8 verse 32. Yeah. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. See, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Right. Our people are in bondage mentally because they're not free by the truth. Bring it out. All our people need to know is the answers of who they are, where they come from, who their God is, and then the earth will begin to fall back in line. But it's not fair that they keep lying to us, right? So the Lord said, you know what? I'm going to pour delusion out on them. Give me 1 Samuel 1 and 14 really quick. And this is for you, sister, because what you got to understand is you have been drunk by America too. Did you vote for Biden? Huh? You don't got to live here. I can see that you follow American ways. Just, yeah, just by how you dress. And I'm not judging you like according to your appearance. I can see that you have been guided by America or influenced by America, Americanized, westernized. If, right. if you see all the other countries, even some countries in Africa want to embrace American ways. Okay? Do you, do you, 
do you follow the so-called white Jesus Christ? If I said close your eyes and think of Jesus Christ, the first image is going to be that white Jesus right there. That's the first image that's going to pop up in your mind. Him. You've been drunk, sister. Right. You have drank in the wine of America's fornication. That's right. right? You fall guilty to that. See, if I said, who is Jesus Christ, and, 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 and before we taught you he was black, you would say, him. See, but this guy goes by the name of Caesar Borgia. Right? The son of a pope. Right. right, who was a homosexual, That's right. slept with his own sister, That's right. and died of syphilis. That's right. right, and they made him a god in the Western world. God. You understand? That's that truth that the Israelites been speaking for decades, man. That woke me up and took me out of my delusional state. Bring it out. Right, the First Samuel chapter one, verses fourteen. Bring that out for the sister. This is First Samuel chapter one and verse fourteen. And Eli said unto her. How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. See, how long you gonna be drunken, sister? Put away that doctrine from you. Put away, hey, hey, listen, sister. See, that's one of the problems right there. You see that guy right there with the small hat? Right, that's one of the biggest problems. That is the biggest problem in the world. Right, he's saying he's a Jew and he is not. He's an Amalekite that the Lord wanted to be destroyed since the days of Saul. Look at, look, he wants you to shake his hand. He wants you to shake his hand. Why won't we shake his hand? Daniel 8 and 23. I'll tell you why we won't shake his hand, because we believe in this truth. We believe in the Bible. We draw a line between good and evil. Why would I shake that man's hand? He don't take me serious, right? Why would I shake his damn hand? There's no business shaking his damn hand. Right? Knowing that he's trying to be who I am. That's Knowing right. that he's trying to sit in the seat where I'm supposed to be at. Knowing he's in the land and can go back to Israel and the land they stole. Right? 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 Hold on, I'll bring this one out first. This is Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. Bring it out! And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the fall, a king of fierce continent and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Yeah, verse 25. And through his policy also he shall cause... This is the white man coming into power under... Uh, the uh, King Alexander the, the homo, right? right Go ahead. Right. Craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. See, he's going to magnify himself in his heart and by peace. Sister, you listening? Did you put away that wine? Did you at least put a little bit out? Right? Pour some for the dead, the dead home. Something. Get that wine out of your system, right? It says, and by his peace shall he destroy many. Right? That's the so-called white man. How many peace treaties did the white man break when he came over here? Are you familiar with that history? You don't know that history? Do you know just by you walking on America, do you know that this city, Manhattan, comes from the name of a, of a city and a country that the Native Americans called Manhattan? You didn't know that. But you're walking on Native American soil and bones. Wow. Yeah, the earth is hurting from under your feet. Right. Right? And see, only people can only swallow so much truth, man. People can only receive so much truth because they're still delusional. Right? Go ahead. This is Sirach chapter, tw uh, chapter 12 and verse 10. Yeah. Never trust thine enemy. Never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rust, so is his wickedness. See, as I am rusted, so is the enemy's wickedness. Why should I, why should I trust somebody trying to be me? That's somebody that's envious of me. If you ever had somebody growing up that was like, yo, man, I want to be just like that dude. I want to be just like him. I like the way he dribble, man. I like the way he wears socks, man. I like the way he got his chain, man. Eventually, he's going to have envy in his heart and he's going to conspire to kill you. And that's what's been going on 
uh, considering us, concerning us blacks, Hispanics, and natives, man. Everybody wants to be us, but our own people don't want to be us, man. Go ahead. This is Job 6 and verse 25 in the CEV. Yeah. The truth is always painful. The truth is always painful. Man, I love hanging around some car with the NLT, CEV, and GMT and all that, man. Damn right. Let's switch it up a little bit. Get out. I mean, the King James is solid, but damn. A little flavor. Them just hit right on point. You know what I'm saying? That thought for thought is just close to the word for word. Damn. Damn right. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people need to under, hey, you, with the camera. You was up here smiling and jumping around and stuff. Do you know who we are? You don't know who we are? We're the Hebrew Israelites. You familiar? Yes, right. Are you a journalist? Yeah. Why do you have a camera? You're just a tourist? You're a tourist? So why do you have a camera out? You just like taking pictures? You're just a photographer? Yes. Okay, so yes. So I have a question for you. Do you know uh, what's getting ready to take place. Do you hear what's going on in, in world, you know, concerning World War III? Everyone's talking about this. World War III, World War III, World War III. Are you familiar with what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, what's your opinion on it? I think it will be happening in the future. You think World War III is going to happen in the future? Yeah. And so what is the fate of this country, America? What do you think is going to be the outcome of America? Yeah, no idea. No idea? Well, you know the Bible has an idea of what's going to happen to this place, right? You, do you, do you want to know? Why not? All right, let's teach him, right? All right, let's teach him. Give me, uh, go back to Revelation, right? Yeah, Revelation 18. Give me that, you got the CV, CV uh, g and All right, read it in that. Read it like from like verse, hey, you listening? What's your name? Demon. Who? Demon. I, I, I can't demon. pronounce it. Demon. demon, yeah, demon. <laughs> so, so, so check it, right? You got it? Right. Listen, this is what's gonna happen to America, right? The outcome of World War III. Bring that up. Come on. It says, this is uh, Revelation 8, 18 and verse 4. Bring it up. says, then I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out my people, come out from her. You must not take part in her sins. What did the Bible just say? You ain't listening, man. You are insincere, man. You just coming up here to be a creep, ain't you? Right? You're not sincere. Are you an agent? <laughs> do I look agent? Yeah, do, are, are, are you a journalist that have the Hebrew Israelites under investigation or something? Right. Right? You can't bring nobody around a second. Well, you know we're not the only people under investigation. America's under investigation by the Most High God. Right? He's got every name written down. Right? He's got every name written for a particular judgment, man. All that do evil and that sin and that have touched his people, spoken of, of, against his people, have a special place in his kingdom. Right? He has a special prison right for you, too. Right? He's going to put Edomites and garrisons in that day. Right? right? He's going to put all you nations in captivity. You going into captivity. That's right. I'm glad that you accept that, right? All of you are going into captivity if you are not uh, uh, an Israelite that's keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to my people. You need to wake up and come out of sleep. You know why? Because God is crying. Maybe Matthew 25 and 1. You need to have wisdom in these times, man. You need to have wisdom. Start from verse 5. Matthew 25 verse 5 the kingdom of heaven was likened unto 10 virgins right right and the lord said that five virgins they trimmed their their candles they trimmed their their, their candlesticks and they kept their oil and their flame burning Bring it out, right. Right? 
So what we're trying to do is get, give me Jeremiah 18 and 15. What we're trying to do is get our people to understand that they are the anointed of God and to become the beacons of the society to their people so that we could get out of this place, man. Right. And that that door could shut right in the face of these heathen and right. we enter into our chambers with our king, Yahweh Shad, man. Right. And we restore our priesthood and we set up this kingdom and we're gonna look forward to an Eden in the future, man. That's, That's right. what we look forward to. Oh, uh, Matthew 25, verse 5. Look it out. This is Matthew chapter 25, verse 5. Look it out. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. See, while the bridegroom tarried, while we, see, listen, while the bridegroom, who is the Mashiach and I was shy, he just waited for his bride to get ready, right? I need another reading. Give me Esther chapter 2, verses 12. While the, while the bridegroom, right, was waiting for his wife, to be adorned and elect. See, what crime do you blacks, Hispanics? Hey, listen, my Hispanic brothers, y'all Hispanic? Y'all Hispanic? What's your nationality? Right? You know the Lord is coming, right? It's very soon, right? The Lord is coming real soon, right? But see, while the bridegroom Terry, listen, his people, man, fell asleep. His people ain't looking for the day when he's supposed to get ready for the bridegroom, man. Go ahead. And at midnight, there was a cry made. See, this is the midnight cry. They saying, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. But look, everybody's still under that damn delusion. Everybody's still under that delusion, drunk with the wine of America's fornication, man. Go ahead. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. See, all of the virgins, the elect, trimmed their lamps. They got ready. They got ready to meet the husband, right? They got ready for the consummation. Go ahead. Verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. See, the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, our lamps are gone out. It's going to be a time we're going to say, Yo, we told y'all this, man. That's right. We told y'all to get ready. But I wanted to walk by, just take the car, don't call the brothers up. The Lord has the bucket, right? If we're fishing out here, guess what? Each and every Israelite camp and each and every brother has a number to call and has a desk you can sit at and learn from and sit and grow and be nurtured and nourished under the laws, man, and be guided into becoming a new creature in Christ. That's right. So there's a bucket, man. But you, can, you know what? You're going to say in that day, yo, give me some of that oil. Ain't going to be no more. The Lord is going to draw back his spirit. And there's going to be no truth out here, man. Give me that in Esther chapter 2, verses 12. It's the book of Esther chapter 2, and verse 12. Yeah. Now when every maid's turn was come to go into the king Ahasuerus, after that she had been 12 months according to the manner of women. See that? There's a certain time length according to the manner of a, of a woman, one who was betrothed to a husband, to get ready to marry the king. See, you guys don't think that Christ is a great king. You don't respect him. I guarantee you, if Joe Biden walked down here right now, he's going to have security. He's going to have guns, right? Even though there's no guns allowed here in this state right now, in this city right now, Joe Biden's going to be allowed guns and ammunition to protect him. And you're going to be like, he's a powerful man. Man, Joe Biden's brain is the size of a damn raisin right now. That's right. You give him more respect than the creator of all things. That's right. Right? Before the king comes, he needs a herald in the midst saying, the king is coming, man. That's the king, right. the great That's king right. is coming, man. That's right. The king is on his way, and he's going to slay. He's going to enslave. He's right. going to beat down the enemy to pieces, man. What y'all don't understand? Right? If a king sets a decree out to send everybody in prison, in martial law, everyone gets scared, man. That's right. Oh, the king said it. Oh, so we gotta do it. He enacted the new law. He vetoed the law. He's passing this and he's passing that. The Lord gave us these laws and nobody fears them. Man. Nobody fears the, the terror and the might of the Lord. The very air you breathe and the cold that you shiver in it, right? That's his cold. Right? That very fire that he created that you can't touch. He created that. See, and all of y'all have no respect and love for the Lord. And I'm gonna I'm I'm end it on this because I'm gonna pass it up soon. Hey, excuse me, I got one question. Do you like, 
Listen, we flip. We just teaching the Bible. I got one question for. I got one question. Anybody love the Bible? Hey, you love the Bible? Who loves the Bible out here? I guess this country wasn't built in the Bible, right? Who loves the Bible? Who loves the Bible? Anybody? All right, see. Look. No one in America loves the Bible, man. That's why we come out here and we're public enemy number one. Because we love the Bible. We love the words of God. To hell with the words of Joe Biden and the words of men. To hell with the words of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, to hell with Abraham Lincoln. I'll rip up the Emancipation the Proclamation if I could. You understand? To hell with all of that. To hell with Black History Month. To hell with whatever y'all gave us. To hell with Martin Luther for King Day. To hell with all of it. You know why? Because we respect the men of the Lord, man. We respect our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. We respect the sacrifices of the prophets, man. We respect the heroes of faith, man, that's written off in the heroes of fame, man. Those, that's the real hall of fame, man. This is the true hall of fame and the patriarchs that taught us how to live upright and be respectful to one another, love one another. Right, y'all say, love your neighbor. Why you guys teach hate? Well, last time I checked, our fathers did teach us not to overthrow another land's landmark. But what did y'all do to us? Our law says, oh, do not overthrow another land's landmark, man. And we respected that. But guess what y'all did to us? Y'all overthrew our landmark and said, we believe in the Bible. To hell with that, man. Right. To hell with y'all damn hypocrites, man. Right? right? So... I'm going to close out on this last scripture. Give me, um, yeah, you said John 8 and 32. Right, yeah, give me uh, Romans 13 and 11. Right, for all of you sleepy Israelites, man, for all of you sleepy Israelites, man, that's counting sheep right now, right, that don't want to wake up and come out of sleep. This is the greatest time to be alive on the earth, man. You know why? Because the prophets of old saw these days and they desired to be in them because the Son of Man was coming. The Son of the Living God was coming to rescue us from this, man. And it, it's a, listen, man, I'm going to rejoice in that day. Matter of fact, Spirit, Psalms 1 and 20, 126 and 1. You know, it's going to be a lot of mixed emotions inside of me, man. It's going to be a lot of trouble. It's going to be a lot of fear. It's going to be a lot of excitement, right? That day has finally come. But nobody's looking for that day. All y'all looking for next is damn St. Patrick's Day, man. This place gonna be damn green, man. It don't take a profit to know that. If this place gonna be green in March, it's gonna be damn lucky charms everywhere. It's gonna be little midgets y'all hired to run around here like damn leprechauns. You gotta do a little flips and cartwheels, man. That's what's gonna take place. We, we can see it, man. It's year in and year out, man. See, the Bible don't just do year in and year out, man. This thing is everlasting, man. That's right. This thing unfolds day by day. And there's new things in the spirit that we grasp out of the spiritual realm, man. You understand? This thing is the manifold wisdom of God, man. Go ahead, uh, Psalms 126 and 1. Psalm chapter 126 and verse 1. Bring it out! When Yahweh turned again the captivity of Zion. See, when he turned back our captivity, right? We were like them that dreamed. See, we were like them that dreamed, man. We were like them that couldn't believe we were in awe. Watch what I'm telling you. It's going to be one chariot the size of this damn whole, this whole block. And y'all going to look up, and it's going to be just like Independence Day, how y'all saw it, man. It's going to light this shit up with a beam of light, man. And y'all going to vaporize, man. That's what's going to happen, man. That's what's going to take place all throughout this earth, the curse that's sent in the earth. Romans 13 and 11, right? To all of y'all that think that just how, oh, oh, he got one. Go ahead, Spirit. Watch this. I'm going to read it in the AMP. This is Psalm 126 in the Amplified Version. When Yahweh brought back the captives to Zion, Jerusalem, we were like those who dreamed. It seemed so unreal. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with joyful set with joyful shouting. Then they said among the nations, Yahweh has done great things for them. Yahweh has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our captivity, O Yahweh.
Ahawa as the stream beds in the south are restored by torrents, by torrents of rain, that they who sow in tears shall reap with joyful singing. He who goes back and forth weeping, carrying his bag of seed for planting, will indeed come again with a shout of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. There you go. It's harvest time, man. I, I'm not going to be able to believe that day when it happens. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be in unbelief. Now, I'm a believer now. It's going to feel unreal. But then it says we're going to laugh. And I see a lot of people don't know the prophecy of Isaac, man, really goes into he shall laugh in the end. While Ishmael and everybody mocking, we, the Israelites, going to have the last laugh. And I can't wait, man. I can't wait to just take it was an Edomite earlier that, that, that blew a kiss to us laughing. I wanted to grab him by the damn neck. I said, Lord, not yet. <laughs> you, didn't give me the, you didn't give me the authorization yet. Yes, you got you, you to gotta judge me first, and I got to earn that title, man. That's right. Because I'm still running. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to walk, man. I'm still trying to hold on, man. Right? I'm trying to be perfect in the Lord, man. You understand? But guess what? In that day, I want to be on the other side. Man, tearing down for the Lord. That's right. You understand me? I got vengeance in my heart. Best believe it. Right. Right? Last scripture. This is Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Yeah. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. See? Now is our salvation nearer than when we believe, man. You understand? So I want all of you children of Israel, the Native Americans, the Hispanics, the Blacks, the Haitians, the West Indians, all of you Hispanics, let me tell you something. Your salvation is near, and you need to wake up and come out of sleep. Come out of America's lies and delusion and stop being drunk with America's fornication. With that, boom ya sha'Allah. Boom ya sha'Allah. Boom ya sha'Allah. Boom ya sha'Allah. Boom ya sha'Allah.